What we're going to learn in this particular chapter is how to create a control flow and the tools that we'll use to create those control flows. Well, effectively, we really have two tools. First of all, let's take a look at the SQL Server Management Studio. Bring this down here. And I've already opened up a SQL Server Management Studio session, and I'm going to expand on this a little bit better so we can see it. What I've done here is I've opened up or navigated to the AdventureWorks DWR2 database. And the reason that we want to use this tool is this tool will enable us to view the tables and views that we will have access to within our control flow. So I'm going to go ahead and expand on the AdventureWorks database. And these are all the tables that I have access to. And we're going to be working with the DIM customer table. I do a right mouse click on the DIM customer, and I'm going to select the top 1,000 records. The reason I'm doing this is just to validate and verify that we do have records in the DIM customer table. The DIM customer table, or the DIM, references the dimension tables that we have within our data warehouse environment. As you can see here over on the right hand side, it creates a little SQL script and it says select top 1000 records. And we come down here, this is the actual data that's displayed. So sure enough, we do have data in the customer table. So let me go ahead and minimize this. The other tool that we're going to use, and this is the tool that we'll use to build our control flows. So we're going to go to start and we're going to go to SQL Server Data Tools. This is also available under all programs. SQL Server 2012 under SQL Server Data Tools. The only reason that it's in my main menu is because I've accessed it a few times. In SQL Server 2012, we'll use the SQL Server Data Tools as opposed to the Business Intelligence Development Studio that you might see in SQL Server 2008. In 2012, they have gone away from the bids and we're now using everything within Visual Studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open up a new project and I'm going to give it a project name and we're going to call this Control Flow IS. You'll notice here we're going to create an integration services project of business intelligence type. So let's go ahead and click OK. And we do that, we see over here on the left hand side it says it's creating the Control Flow IS. Now, if I navigate over here to my Windows Explorer and I can navigate to the Infinite Skills directory and I'll navigate to Projects and I'll be able to see under the Projects directory that I have created this new directory called Control Flow IS. So it's doing exactly as I would want it to do. So let me go ahead and close this guy out. And we can see that I've opened up this new project. On my left hand side, I have the SSIS toolbox. I have the design page in the middle, and I have the solution explorer on the far right hand side. Down here under the getting started tab, eventually we will see that as the properties tab. And down here at the bottom or underneath the design tab, I have the connection managers. So let's take a look at each individual tab. Well, this particular tab that we're dealing with is going to be the control flow. We have control flow tabs, we have data flow tabs, we have parameter tabs, event handlers, as well as package explorers. Now, if we selected the control flow tab on the left hand side under the SSIS toolbox, these are all the flows that we can bring into the control flow portion of the design package. We can have a control flow that is actually a data flow, an execute SQL task, and then if we come down here, we can look at some of the more common tasks. For example, we have create an analysis services process. We can do a bulk insert. Bulk insert is designed to load vast amount of data into your SQL Server environment. We have a data profiling task, which is typically used by DBAs to do tuning. We can execute a process, which is this guy right here, and we can also execute a package. Not only can we execute a SQL Server package, but we can also execute a file system. And that's what this is, execute a file system task, this is actually executing an operating system task, for example, a .exe or a shell script or a .batch file. We can script a task, we can send an email, we can call a web service, and we can even have an XML task. Other tasks that we can have on our control flow would be looped containers. So we can create a for loop, which basically enables us to go through a series of steps multiple times. We have a for each loop, which basically does about the same thing as a for loop. And then we have a sequence container, which again will execute a series of steps a predetermined number of times. The other tasks that we have that we can place in the control flow would be things like analysis services, backup a database, we can do a maintenance cleanup task, we can rebuild an index, we can reorganize an index. Most of these tasks that you'll see right here will be commonly used by DBAs to do database maintenance on a scheduled basis. We can also see that as I navigate from each individual pane, the tools that we have available in our SSIS toolbox will change. So if I come over here to Dataflow, I can see the tools I have available 
would be things like destination assistance, source assistance, aggregate, data conversion. So this is actually manipulating the data that we're going to bring into our SSIS package. Then if we go to the parameters tab, since we don't have any parameters defined for this package, we don't have any of them defined over here under our toolbox. The same thing holds true with the event handlers. Under the event handlers, again, these options change, but we can see the event handlers are going to be very similar to what we have in the data flow task. And then we go to the package explorer. These are all of the objects that are available to us within this package. So let me navigate over here to control flow. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and bring in an execute SQL task. When we bring in an execute SQL task, we notice a couple of things. First of all, it has this big red X. The big red X means that it's not fully developed or that there's an error with it. So we're going to have to modify that. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and change this name. And we're going to call this get dim customers. So now I have the control flow task, execute SQL, which is going to get dim customers. Now, if I select it and do a right mouse click, and I come down here on properties, and we can see over here on the bottom right hand side, we have the properties tab. And if I can come over here and I'm going to expand this a little bit more so we can see it, and we'll scroll up, and we get options here like delay validation, disable, do we want to fail the package on failure, fail the parent on failure. For right now, we're just going to go ahead and accept the default. We have a description. This tells us what type of task it is. It's an execute SQL task, and then this is the name of that particular task. Then I have things here like bypass prepare which is unique to an execute SQLs task, which basically has to do with the parsing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the get dim customers execute SQL task. And what I'm really after would be these things here, like the SQL statement. It's going to say, well, what type of connection type do you have? Well, we're going to connect to an OLE database. It's going to ask us for the connection manager. Well, I'm going to go over here and hit the drop down box, and I don't have any connection managers established. So let's go ahead and create a new connection. I'm going to go ahead and select new, and we're going to type in localhost, and we're going to connect to the database AdventureWorks DWR2. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now I'll go ahead and click OK here, and that's going to assign that connection manager to this execute SQL task. Then it's going to ask me, what is the SQL source type? So where is it retrieving the SQL from? If I hit the drop down box, I can do a direct input which enables me to type a SQL statement, which is what I'm going to do. Or I can do a file connection, or I can do a variable. So we're going to choose a direct input, and then we're going to type in the SQL statement. We have a couple of options here. We can hit the ellipse button here to actually type in the SQL statement, or we can go ahead and hit build query. I'm going to go ahead and hit build query, and it's going to come up with a little query builder, and I'm just going to say select star, and then down here after the from, I'm going to type in dim customers. Let's go ahead and execute the SQL statement. To execute the SQL statement, we see this little green arrow up here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And here it's giving me an invalid object name. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Because the reason that is, if I come back over here to my SQL Server Management Studio, I can see that I'm selecting from dim customer, not dim customers. So I just had a typo. So I'm going to minimize this and change this from dim customers to dim customer. Now let's go ahead and execute the query. It brings everything in. It selects all the columns and all the rows from the dim customer table. Then if I want to, I can exclude a series of columns by just unchecking the box and click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And now I can see that dim customers is a very valid object because there's no big red X here. So this is just one example of what you can do to bring in specific tasks into your control flow. In this particular example, we decided to execute a specific SQL statement. But if we want to, we can also bring in these other tasks. For example, if we wanted to bring in an execute file system task, we could execute a file system task, and then just double click on this. And it's going to give us an operation as far as what do we want to do. We can copy a file, create a directory, delete a directory, delete directory content, delete a file, move a file, rename a file, or even set its attributes. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave this for now. So we'll come back to this at a later point in time. But the whole point of this particular course was to introduce you to creating a control flow and bring it into the design tab of your SQL Server integrated services packages.